Hello friends, today we'll be discussing uh, 1937 elections. One important event that, that uh, requires mentioning before we delve into the 1937 elections is the Government of India Act 1935. This was introduced by the British government in order to ease the growing tension that was growing in the subcontinent and to make governing this land a little bit convenient. When this act was introduced, uh, the Muslim League was not happy with it and neither was the Congress. Uh, Nehru of the Congress, you know, he claimed it as the charter of uh, slavery, uh, whereas uh, Jinnah had uh, talked about it as thoroughly rotten. But when the elections were introduced by the British government in 1937, both Muslim League and the Congress, they decided to contest the elections. Now, why was it so? The reason being, Muslim League felt that its message would be, uh, you know, uh, uh, spread across India through these elections. Now, whenever elections are held, uh, the political parties, they campaign for those elections and they move across the country, spreading their message, exporting their message, communicating with the millions of people living in the con uh, country. And in that way, uh, they spread their agenda or the motives uh, that um, they stand for. So uh, Jinnah was also persuaded to join the politics and in 1934, he was made the permanent president of the Muslim League. Uh, now he campaigned... Uh, you know, on two main principles. That is, um, uh, he believed that once a Muslim League came into power after the elections, they would see to it that India would slowly and gradually move towards self-government. Secondly, provincial autonomy would be granted. That is, um, uh, province, provinces would be given a larger num amount of power. And safeguards for the minorities would be ensured. That is, the rights of the minorities would be protected. On the other hand, Congress, uh, Nehru was initially not in favor of contesting the elections. However, other leaders who uh, who's, uh, were there in the Congress, you know, they convinced him that he needed to participate in the government in the elections of 1937. Again, for the same purpose that he needed to export their policy and their future programs to the millions of disenfranchised people throughout the country. Uh, disenfranchised people are those people who are not granted the right to vote. So these were the reasons why the Muslim League and Congress, they finally decided to contest the elections of 1937, although they were not happy with the Government of India Act 1935. Now, there was a difference of opinion between the views of Jinnah and Nehru. Jinnah believed that these elections of 1937, uh, whenever they would be contested and fought, after that, you know, there would be a unity between um, uh, the Muslims and the Hindus and the other minorities, and a cooperative form of a government would be formed. Uh, however, Nehru was not of this opinion. He believed that India comprised of only two parties, that is the British and the Congress. This angered Jinnah. And the results of the elections were also not favorable for the Muslim League. They were very, very disappointing because Congress had won an absolute majority in five provinces. It was a single largest pro uh, party in four other provinces. Now, let us look at uh, the names of the provinces. In United Provinces, uh, Central Provinces, Bihar, Odisha, Madras, Bombay, and later on in Assam and NWFP also, uh, the Congress was invited to form the ministries, whereas um, the Muslim League had failed miserably everywhere. If you talk about, you know, provinces uh, that were Muslim-majority provinces like Punjab um, and uh, Sindh and Bengal, even in those, although, uh, you know, they were Muslim-majority areas, but Muslim League had won only 109 seats out of the 482 seats that were reserved for the Muslims. You have to keep in mind that these elections were contested on the basis of separate electorates, meaning the Muslims were given the right for separate electorates. However, Muslim League had been defeated by the Congress. And uh, um, here, uh, let's also understand the concept of, uh, you know, winning an absolute majority and winning uh, and being the single largest party, like how we discussed earlier, that Congress was an absolute, won an absolute majority in five provinces and it was the single largest party. In four others. Now, what is the difference between being an absolute majority in a single largest party? Let us look at an example. Okay, it's only an example, just to make you understand. Okay, so keep in mind that it's an example. Supposing if in a house there are around two fifty total number of seats. Okay, so this is the total number of seats, and the number of seats that were required that are required to win the elections are uh, one fifty, one forty. Let's say. Okay, so these are the total number of seats that a party has to has to must must uh, win in order to uh, form the government now uh, let us suppose uh, this is case one 
this is the absolute majority here and in this case uh, there's party a and party a wins around 150 seats now these seats are larger than the number of seats that are required to form the government so you don't even have to consider how many seats were won by b c or d etc etc okay so it's a uh, it's very um, uh, uh, you know obvious that party a will be forming government in case one so it has won by absolute majority this is an absolute majority case right now let, let us look at case two in case two let's keep the same scenario in the house there are 250 total number of seats and 140 is the total number of is the uh, required number of seats uh, for winning uh, and uh, for forming the government okay in this case a has won let's say around 100 number of seats b wins 80 and c let's say 60 and d wins none okay so in this case none of the parties have won a number of seats equivalent to form the government so what will happen here is we look at the party that has won the maximum number of seats and it's a so a here is the single largest party okay so this is the difference between winning in majority and being the single largest party when we say congress was the single largest party in four provinces so this was the scenario there okay that congress had won the maximum number of seats out of the other uh, uh, you know in comparison to the other uh, parties that were contesting elections okay and in this case that is in case two uh, uh, a will not be able to form the government obviously because it has not won um, the number of seats that were required so you know it would negotiate with the other parties and form a coalition setup okay i hope this is clear now okay now let's go back to uh, where we were okay now you usually get a question like what were the lessons learned um, if you talk about muslim league muslim league had uh, failed miserably but what were the lessons learned out of this uh, whole uh, you know, election thing? So, and this is a question that is important. So, when uh, such a question is asked, you can elaborate on these four points. Point number one is, these elections actually unified the party. It unified the Muslim League after the split in 1930s. There was a split in 1930s. Uh, and uh, this was the first time that the Muslim League, all the members were standing together. Then, it uh, secondly, Muslim League became aware uh, of the whole election processing uh, um, uh, and uh, it also became aware that more planning and organization was required if it had to reach you know uh, the uh, nook and corner of uh, the entire country and uh, thirdly muslim league uh, realized that it had more support in the muslim minority areas rather than in the muslim majority areas the reason being the muslims felt threatened in the muslim minority areas and they needed more support Whereas in the Muslim majority areas, they were not being threatened and therefore they did not feel that they needed to support Muslim League. And the fourth point was um, that it also exposed, these elections badly exposed, that the Muslim League had an image problem. What was this image pro problem? Um, the Muslim League comprised mainly of the aristocrats, the princes and the well-to-do people. However, if you looked at the you know, Muslim population in general, you know, they were largely poor and they were illiterate. So they could not relate with the uh, Muslim League leaders and therefore they um, did not support the Muslim League. So these were the lessons that the Muslim League had learned after, after the election. So this was it for today. We discussed uh, the elections of 1937. These elections were held in accordance with the Government of India Act 1935. And uh, uh, we looked at how the both, both the parties uh, contested the elections and the uh, Muslim League uh, failed. Uh, the lessons that Muslim League learned. Uh, there is more to it. That is what happened after the elections when Congress had won the elections. Uh, what were the difficulties uh, that the Muslims faced in India and uh, what happened after those difficulties. So we'll be looking at that in our next lessons. Uh, till then, I'm um, signing off and wait for the next lessons. Uh, inshallah, they'll be coming up soon. Uh, take care of yourselves. Till then, bye-bye.